thank you uh, chairperson sir and uh, good morning and we have been talking uh, in last uh, three talks we are talking about how to intensify the therapy and how to achieve a good glycemic control my job here to uh, is to just talk about a very important uh, aspect which is hypoglycemia and uh, more specifically hypoglycemia at night time we know how nocturnal hypoglycemias can uh, have uh, deleterious effect on our cardiovascular system and it can cause cvs as well so uh, i'll just uh, i have a couple of slides uh, which would uh, take you through the story of nocturnal hypoglycemia and we'll try to uh, uh, give more importance to this topic so that we can uh, reduce the events in our patients so uh, avoiding nocturnal hypoglycemia myself dr rupam choudhury from guwahati so hypoglycemia is defined as a uh, blood sugar level of less than 70 mg per deciliter and if you talk about severe hypoglycemia it would be below 56 uh when you talk about hypoglycemia type 1 diabetics are the one who uh, are affected affected the most so if you look at type 1 diabetic patient uh, they have a annual incidence of severe hypoglycemia ranging from 3.3% to 13.5% while patient treated with insulin or insulin secretagogues like uh, sulfonylureas and uh, maglutinides are generally at higher risk of developing hypoglycemias for about nocturnal hypoglycemia there are a lot of studies uh, that suggest that almost half of all episodes of low blood glucose and more than half of all severe episodes occur at uh, night during sleep the dcct uh, showed 43% of all hypoglycemia events or episodes and 55% of severe episodes reported during sleep incidence rate vary from 12% to 56% however uh, because 49% to 100% episodes occur without any symptoms uh, that's why the actual incidence uh, probably is higher than what is documented in children up to 75% of severe lows have been reported to occur during the uh, night time hours so there are multiple studies let uh, let us talk about couple of studies which uh, give us insight about the hypoglycemias uh, the nocturnal hypoglycemias in our patient uh, most of the studies were done in type 1 diabetic uh, patients and we know that cgm has come uh, very newly in our clinical practice and studies as well so uh, the data is limited but still we have uh, uh, enough data to 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 speculate how nocturnal hypoglycemias are affecting our uh, patients specifically the type 1 diabetic patients let us talk about couple of studies uh, it, uh, the number one study as you can see here marcos uh, prazos uh, uh, the study was done with cgms here they have uh, documented 33% of patients experiencing nocturnal hypoglycemia and 38% of all episodes were nocturnal hypos Uh, in uh, another study uh, 67% of patient uh, had nocturnal hypoglycemias 32% of them is unsuspected uh, let us also talk about the head study which was done in uh, brazil with a sample size of 679 where 54% type 1 diabetics uh, and 27.4% type 2 diabetic patients had nocturnal hypoglycemia so in a nutshell we know that nocturnal hypoglycemia is a persistent problem Uh, which is often overlooked and underdiagnosed uh, since a uh, couple of last 5 uh, 5 years or so we have been uh, using agps and uh, cgms then only we know that uh, patients are having so much of no nocturnal hypoglycemia episode otherwise all those nocturnal hypoglycemias were uh, missed in clinical practice so um, a little bit about the pathophysiology uh, we know during nocturnal hypoglycemias the counter regulatory response are blunted uh, substantially uh, both sleep per se and supine posture has been examined in uh, um, relation uh, to differences in counter regulatory response and it has been seen that when the patient is in supine position the counter regulatory hormones are uh, blunted so that is the reason why nocturnal hypoglycemias happen uh, specifically in early uh, morning times um it is very dangerous when it happens during the sleep uh, cause the symptoms are not recognized and um, uh, the patient um, seldom takes any step to you know uh, counter that uh, undetected nocturnal hypoglycemias may often contribute to hypoglycemia unawareness in long run uh, then the patient uh, can become an anxious Uh, loss of vitality physical injury poor quality of life possible uh, neurocognitive deficits 
major episodes can cause seizure and uh, even coma so why we need to avoid nocturnal hypoglycemia you see this uh, uh, our guideline from eda ac ac they recommend a uh, more stringent uh, glycemic control in our patients uh, which is less than 7% or less than 6.5 in fact which is possible uh, with the invent of uh, uh newer novel therapies like azlt2 inhibitors and dp4 inhibitors and which are again more affordable these days um without causing hypoglycemia we can really achieve a hb1c and i uh, you know we can be more strict with our patient or more stringent with our uh, therapy options uh, hypoglycemia is recognized risk of intensive therapy tighter glycemic control delays development of diabetes related complication and improves clinical outcome this is the statement from adac Nocturnal hypoglycemia is more worrisome than daytime hypoglycemia because sympathoadrenal response to hypoglycemia sub subjective symptoms that provide warning and uh, cognitive function are suppressed during night and uh, there is this term called dead in bed syndrome which is very common in type 1 diabetic patients uh, with uh, longer duration of uh, type 1 diabetes more than 10 years or 15 years because uh, they have autonomic aut autonomic neuropathy and they also have hypoglycemia unawareness uh, uh, syndrome so recurrent exposure to nocturnal hypoglycemia may impair cognitive function other substantial long term morbidity includes the development of acquired hypoglycemia um, syndrome such as impaired awareness of hypoglycemia which we have already talked and hypoglycemia is a frequent adverse effect in anti diabetic therapy in diabetic patients and severe hy hypoglycemia has been identified as a potential risk factor for cardiovascular events and even uh, cerebrovascular events the clinical symptoms uh, clinical features of hypoglycemia nocturnal hypoglycemia vivid dreams or nightmares specifically these are uh, for children poor sleep quality or restlessness during sleep morning headache uh, when uh, the the duration of hypoglycemia is uh, more than 2 hours chronic fatigue mood changes increased muscle tone night sweats and convulsions and aneurysms in uh, children and also uh, uh, what are the risk factors if we talk about of uh, nocturnal hypoglycemia some uh, risk factors are skipping meals particularly dinner workout before bedtime and alcohol we know alcohol uh, suppresses the hepatic glucose output at night and uh, uh, glycogenolysis so uh, taking alcohol at night can cause you know, more chances of hypo uh, or nocturnal hypoglycemia omitted bedtime snack extreme hot humid weather menstruation other medications have uh, patient having infections uh, type and timing uh, timing of insulin treatment all this uh, can cause nocturnal hypoglycemia the excessive doses ill time administration or use of wrong type of insulin uh, can cause which is iatrogenic if you uh, want to term it so um, uh, if the titration of insulin doses are an inappropriate it can Uh, induce hypoglycemia in adequate carbohydrate consumption uh, specifically at night uh, diminution of endogenous glucose production um, and uh, it it cause it is because of alcohol consumption increased glucose utilization because of exercise at night and uh, the the depletion of glycogen storage nocturnal hyperinsulinemia which uh, is seen with insulin admin administration at bed time and diminished counter regulatory hormone which we have already talked about so that entire topic is how to avoid nocturnal hypoglycemia what we should what steps we should take uh, these are very practical points which uh, probably uh, you know more we should explain to every patient who are on insulin or any secretagogues uh, that they should check blood sugar before bed or after bed after dinner uh, just to find out whether they need a bedtime snack uh, specifically in type 1 uh, diabetic patients have a consistent dinner time don't delay your dinner avoiding exercise late at night uh, alcohol we already talked uh, so we should uh, limit alcohol consumption and cesium uh, which is uh, you know uh, new for us um, and, and it is you know uh, it become a little affordable these days so we can use uh, cgm which is superior to smbg uh, in, in our patients and which should tell us the episodes of nocturnal hypoglycemia and probably uh, we can uh, we can take care of the downs phenomena or all those you know uh, highs and lows of patients at night according to the cgm data 
insulin pumps um, again can be used to, uh, uh, to to reduce nocturnal hypoglycemias nowadays uh, probably in the, down the lane in two years we will have uh, the artificial pancreas which is uh, insulin pump which is connected to a, a CGM and that would really uh, give clinical benefits to avoid hypoglycemias at night. Basal insulins are uh, considered as to be superior to the basal bowl, uh, to, to premix insulins uh, when you talk about reducing the hypoglycemia event. Uh, ultra long acting basal insulins like second generation basal insulins such as Glargin U300 or Daglodec per se can, uh, those are superior to, to cause lesser nocturnal hypoglycemias as compared to uh, the premix insulins which we have been using since decades. Basal bolus regimen is uh, again uh, considered to be superior to premix insulin twice or thrice because we have that flexibility of uh, adjusting every you know, uh, pre-meal insulin and bedtime insulin uh, independently. So that gives us that, uh, that freedom to titrate the doses. So how to treat hypoglycemia? This is my last slide. So these are all known facts, but probably, uh, you know, again, telling yourself more and more uh, times okay, how to uh, take care of the hypoglycemia episodes and also inducing the same practice in patient is very important when we are in clinical practice. So rule of 15 uh, is what uh, we have to follow uh, to avoid nocturnal hypoglycemias. That is, uh, give 15 gram of carbohydrates in cases of hypoglycemias, wait for 15 minutes. If uh, the patient's blood sugar uh, level does not come to optimal level, then repeat the procedure again. So that is what, and in patients who are going into, uh, you know, uh, who, who cannot take uh, oral, uh, uh, orally, uh, who cannot accept orally, in those cases probably IV, you know, cannulation and giving a 25% IV dextrose uh, really helps to to regain the hypoglycemia episodes. So uh, this is what I had to talk. So my take home message would be, uh, probably it's time we should talk more about hypoglycemias than hyperglycemias that, that we have those agents which Earlier we used to say oral OHAs, oral hypoglycemic agents, but these days we talk about OADs, oral anti-diabetic drugs. So it, it need not to be a, a drug which causes hypoglycemia in patients particularly. So Madam and Sir, they have already talked that we have SGLT2, GLP1s, oral GLP1s, we have uh, DB4 inhibitors which are, uh, which are affordable to patients. Probably it's time we shift away from all those secretogogues and put those agents which uh, would give extra glycemic benefit to our patients rather than just talking about numbers. So it is, we all know that it is not a number game. Despite having a good glycemic control, a lot of our patients are landing up in cardiovascular events and cerebrovascular events. So uh, giving those benefits is really what we should look forward to. So thank you very much for your patient hearing.